Let's say you're running a dance competition. You have your judges picked out for the big show, but now you have to decide on what method you want your judges using for scoring. Do you have them using the ranking method or rubric method? In this video, we're just focusing on the ranking method, talk about how it works, and the reasons why you would or wouldn't use it in a dance competition. Let's look at this method through the lens of a judge. The scoring sheet a judge would get would look like this, where all the competitors' names are listed on the left going down in show order. All the squares are on the diagonal are where judges score each dancer. The ranking method has judges rank each dancer as the show goes on. The opening act automatically gets a 1 since it's technically the best act that has happened so far. When the second act goes, the judge will give it a 1 if they thought it was better than the first act, or 2 if they thought the first act was better. After the third act has gone, a judge will have to decide to give it a 1 if it's the best act that has happened so far, a 2 if it's the second best act that has happened so far, or a 3 if the previous two acts were better. This process of a judge directly ranking each act against the previous acts repeats until the end of the show. Once all acts have gone, the judges add up all the rankings of each dancer, and the dancer with the lowest score is the winner. The nice thing about this method is that it's pretty easy to implement. Each judge gets a single sheet of paper, and the math is just simple addition. The ranking method is good for comps with low number of entries, and when there's a high skill difference between competitors. It's also good for competitions focused on a single style of dance. However, there's quite a few drawbacks to using a ranking method. First and foremost, it's a highly subjective method. Judges are effectively ranking each act using an undefined metric. And even if judges were super transparent about their rankings, it's not going to be effective feedback for the dancers. Second, this method is highly prone to recency bias. This is a very real psychological effect. Acts that occur later in the show lineup have an advantage since those routines are fresh in the judges' minds. This also means that the event coordinator has a lot of power influencing who wins their dance competition, which is not a good thing. Along the lines of having too much power, a single judge or tabulator can completely sabotage a dancer's chance of winning just by giving them the lowest rating. Like for example, consider these four dancers with the following scores. The last dancer is listed in first place, but if we swap the four for like say a 17, they are completely off the podium. The ranking method also lacks the mathematical detail needed when the top dancers in the competition are very close in skill level. For example, let's say we have three dancers and we have judges scoring based on a 1 to 10 scale. In this case, you could see that A is the winner here, but if we converted this directly into the ranking method, then B is the winner here. The ranking method just lacks the granularity needed. Speaking about math, this method is highly susceptible to ties just because it involves integer addition between small sets. Not to get too deep into group theory right now, but think of situations like this, where two dancers effectively get the same score, and there's no objective way to break the tie. And lastly, the ranking method requires some sort of intermission between the last act and the winner announcements, even with the tabulator. The dancer's final scores are only available once all acts have gone, especially if the judges need to deliberate to break a tie, which we know will most likely happen. So yeah, that pretty much summarizes the ranking method. It's a simple system with a few flaws, but it does have its place in certain scenarios. If you're the coordinator at a small con, you may want to consider using this method. Otherwise, I highly suggest checking out my video on the rubric method next. Anyway y'all, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. The end is just a montage of me. Need my coffee.